sight. I love this great country, and I'm so grateful to be here with all of you. I was walking around earlier today, and I feel this sense of hope, of inspiration, and motivation, because you know how serious the task at hand is before us. Never before in my life did I think that we would be having to gather here in a place like this with the knowledge that our fundamental rights and freedoms, the principles of this great country, are under attack. Not by some foreign power, but from those in some of the highest positions of power right here in our own government. It's for this reason that this is the most important election of our lives. And you may have heard this over and over again, oftentimes this is a line that's used by politicians as they are running for office. I'm not on a ballot. I am here because I am terrified for what our country looks like if those in power today abusing their power are allowed to remain there. This country that we love will become unrecognizable. And my concern is that once our freedoms are lost at that point, it will be virtually impossible to get them back. We are seeing attacks on freedom of speech. We are seeing an unprecedented assault on the rule of law, the weaponization of our Department of Justice and law enforcement, the national security state, to go after Joe Biden's political opponents. We're seeing the fundamental pillars and foundations of our democratic republic being undermined. The mission that we have before us is a no-fail mission. It is a no-fail mission. And it's not up to someone else to fight this battle to defend our freedom. It is up to every single one of us as Americans. I know there are a lot of you who are here today who have worn the cloth of this country, who have served both in peacetime and in wartime. Every one of you, like I did, raised our right hand and swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I took that same oath as a member of Congress, and it's something that, like you, I take very seriously. And so to those who are attacking our freedoms, who are throwing our Constitution in the trash, this is real. This is real. Even if you have laid down your uniform, that oath is written onto our hearts. I joined the Democratic Party over 20 years ago. I was 21 years old in Hawaii, and maybe like some of you, back then I saw a Democratic Party that actually stood for free speech. It was a big tent open party that welcomed people from all different backgrounds, different views, even those they disagreed with. It was a party that stood up for civil liberties, a party that fought for the little guy and still celebrated that vision of Martin Luther King Jr. Fast forward to where we are today, that party is completely unrecognizable. I left the Democratic Party because it is now under the control of an elitist cabal of woke warmongers who are doing all that they can. Who are doing all that they can to destroy our freedom, to take away our constitutional rights, to divide us by racializing everything. Everything has become about race, going directly against that dream of Martin Luther King Jr. They are attacking our freedom of religion. They are pushing us closer and closer to the brink of World War III and nuclear war. How could I, in good conscience, as someone who took that oath to our Constitution, be associated in any way with a party that hates freedom and is destroying the Constitution? powerful people with powerful tools that
that they are weaponizing against us and against our freedoms. But as we look to the next five months before us and this no-fail mission that we have, it's important for you to know that I'm not the only Democrat who's left the Democratic Party. There are many more of us than you may realize. I meet or hear from people every single day as I travel across the country who will come up to me and say, I did the same thing that you did. I felt the same way that you did. Just here today, I met a woman who came up to me and shared that she was unable to convince her daughter, who was working for Gavin Newsom, to leave the Democratic Party. But once I, she heard my story, she said, enough is enough. I'm out. Let's go fight to save America. this message of freedom. This is our opportunity, our privilege, and our responsibility as citizens in this country. We can gather together in rooms like this and build our strategy on how we will reach out to those who may never feel like they belong at a room like this, but people who love this country deeply and who are terrified about the direction the Biden administration, the Democrat elite, are taking us. Reach out that hand and welcome them to the cause of freedom. This is our opportunity and this is how we win in November. So what's at stake here? Nothing short of our freedom and the very identity and foundation of what makes this country the greatest country in the world. We've seen over just the last few years the brazen abuse of power that gets more and more brazen as the days go on. It's becoming harder and harder to ignore, even for those who aren't even paying attention to politics. We look at how, on the one hand, the Biden administration says one thing and the thing that they do is the exact opposite. President Biden has said his whole foreign policy is about democracy defeating autocracies and that he is somehow the champion of democracy. Let's look at what he's doing to our democracy right here at home. Tearing it apart. Trying to take away our right to vote for the candidate of our choosing. Take away our right to express our freedom of speech. You look at how many years that they said, well, we've got a secure border. Trust me, we have a secure border. When anyone who's gone to the border like I have can see that it is not only not secure, it is wide open. Even with this latest action taken by President Biden, his executive order, all he has done in the name of securing the border is institutionalizing illegal immigration crossing this border, aiding and abetting the multi-billion dollar human trafficking industry that the cartels are running. We can't trust a single thing that they say because every time they say they are doing something, they are actually doing the opposite. We have seen in the news a few days ago, you had the FBI Director Christopher Wray going before Congress asking for more money because of an increasing foreign terrorist threat growing within our own borders. I thought it was interesting to me as he said this, and shortly after he said it, they caught eight people who crossed through Joe Biden's open borders from Tajikistan, who are actually a part of ISIS. He never actually mentioned, well, the open borders are what is allowing this wide open welcome mat for these infamous terrorists to come into our country and plan attack from within. He also didn't mention about how much of the FBI's resources that he is asking for more of are being used against our fellow Americans. Targeting those who are exercising their right to free speech. Targeting and looking at those who are peaceful pro-life protesters. Targeting and looking at those parents who are going to Board of Education meetings and protesting and saying, no, my daughter is a girl and she should not have to compete against boys and girls sports.
have the Democratic elite in Washington, the Washington establishment, uh, law enforcement, the national security state, you have big tech, you have big propaganda media. Why are they doing this? Why are they fighting so hard? It's because they're afraid. They are afraid of a free people in a free society exercising our freedoms, our voice, and making sure that we actually have a government of, by, and for the people. Because that means we will throw them out of office and send them home on election day. We're the only people who can stop them. How do we hold them to account for their brazen abuse of power, their destruction of our democracy? We are the only ones who can hold them to account by sending a strong message, an unequivocal message on November 5th, on Election Day, saying that those like Joe Biden, who abuse their power, who reject our Constitution, will not be allowed to remain in power. We will send them home and vote for Donald Trump on November 5th. President Lincoln. He gave a speech on January 27th in 1838 to the Young Men's Lyceum in Springfield, Illinois. And he said, quote, at what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author, and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Those in power in America today are the ones who are leading our great nation towards this suicide that Abraham Lincoln warned against. If we don't act now, if we don't take this no-fail mission to save our country seriously, we will regrettably find ourselves on the other side of this election looking back and saying, we had no warning. So how do we do this? How do we save our country? We come together filled with hope and motivated by love. Love for God, love for our fellow American, love for our country, and a deep, visceral commitment to the defense of freedom. I was in Hawaii recently, going and doing my PT. I was running around the track at the Kaneohe Marine Corps base. And it was in the morning, I had my AirPods in as I was running around the track, and in the corner of my eye, I saw a guy who was mowing the lawn there, all of a sudden stop. As I went along jogging more, I saw a woman pushing a stroller down the sidewalk, all of a sudden stop. A car driving down the street stopped. Finally, I stopped, took down my AirPod, wondering what was going on, and I heard the beautiful sound of Reveille playing. This beautiful sound of a trumpet that occurs every morning and every evening on every military base in America and around the world. That sounds the call for us to stop and reflect as our beautiful flag is being raised in the morning and lowered at the end of the day. In those moments, it is our opportunity to reflect on the many who have sacrificed and given all in service to our country and our freedom. So as we go forward over these next five months and the days that you may feel tired or weary or the days that you may be attacked simply for saying how much you love this country, draw strength and courage from the sacrifices of those who have come before us and know that we, the people, must prevail in this election and save this country that we love. Thank you so much for being here.